How many of you would dearly love to be able to lay your head on the pillow tonight, turn your head off, turn down the rheostat on your conscience and sleep like a baby? Getting up tomorrow morning, feeling great, face the day with confidence, guilt-free. But you believe that's possible for you and me. Welcome to Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce. And I've decided to call our program tonight by title, Guilt Free. Coping with Self-Condemnation. Every day, before I go out running in the morning, there's a verse that I had found not too long ago in 1 John, the New Testament book, chapter 4. I'd like to read it to you just to get us off and running tonight. Quote, verse 19 of chapter 3. This, then, is how we know we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts. He knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Well, that's worth having, isn't it? Confidence and peace to know that you and I are loved more than we could ever imagine. And ask the flugelhorn to introduce Dave Boyer's first number, an old gospel song of freedom from guilt. Receiving the greatest love we could ever imagine. Here's Dave Boyer to sing for us. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so kind and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do No one ever cared for me like Jesus There Take the sin. 
dynamic sound of soloist Dave Boyer with the Ralph Carmichael big band. One of the old ones. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. You know, if you realize that, there's really no reason why you or I or anybody should hit the pillow tonight churning inside because of self-imposed guilt. Some time ago, a study was done on people who had entered full-time Christian service. The object of the study was to determine the psychological motives for entering a religious profession, they called it. And the results were interesting. The study revealed that a great majority of people who serve in full-time religious jobs were there because of guilt. In other words, guilt was the motivating factor. And I would imagine if we were to do a similar study on lay people in the church, we might find that there too, one of the significant motivating factors in their decision to be in the church was a high degree of guilt. Well, in a sense, in a very great sense, it's true because we were all born guilty. According to Romans chapter 5 in the New Testament, let's check that out. Quote, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then there's that very plain statement over in Jeremiah, the Old Testament book, chapter 17, which reads in no uncertain terminology, quote, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, God can know it, and he does. And he still loves us. We don't even know the depths of our own guilt and sin. Some guilt is justified. Most is not. One theologian said, I used to feel that there were two kinds of people in the world, the good and the bad. The bad people drank too much, cursed too much smoked too much, mowed their lawns on Sunday. The good people did not drink too much, curse too much, or smoke too much, and they went to church on Sunday. I was not a pastor for very long before I found out that there are indeed two kinds of people in the world. There are bad people who know it, and bad people who don't know it. The bad people who know it and want to do something about it usually are in the church. The bad people who think they are good have no use for Christ or for his church. And according to Matthew, the Gospel, chapter 9, Jesus said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In other words, if we're following Christ, we do it because we are sinners, not because we're not. The Church of Jesus Christ is a fellowship of people who have been forgiven and who are in the process of change. So, it's only natural that we'd find Christians who are aware of their sin within the church body, even in positions of leadership. So guilt can be a, a proper factor in people's coming to Christ. Maybe that's the only legitimate one. Tonight's program, entitled Guilt Free, and I'd like to quote a couple of 
paragraphs from Steve Brown's book, Living Free. And he speaks here of illegitimate guilt. He said, ask the Father, God, why you feel so inferior to other people. Why you always assume that you're wrong. Why you're afraid to confront. Why you care so much about what people think of you. Then, be silent before the Father, God, allowing him to draw up the memories so that he can heal. Maybe you need, if it is a major problem, to talk to your pastor or a wise friend in whom you can really confide. Maybe there's something major going on there. It could have happened early on when you were a child and you've carried it with you. I know how that can happen. Maybe an overemphasis on perfection, constant criticism, a recurring physical sickness, some defeat in life that was crucial. Let God know about it. Allow Him to, to bring this to memory. Then, don't harbor it or suppress it. Begin to deal with these memories by asking God to take them. One of the interesting aspects about debilitating memories is that they die, or almost die, in the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. They who come to me do not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Of course, that beautiful verse over in Ephesians in the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 8, certainly would come into play here. For by grace you are salvaged, you are saved, rescued. Through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And I can't say that verse without thinking the, the words of D.L. Moody, who said, if any of us could work his or her way to God, you'd never hear the end of it. There's something in us that wants to justify ourselves. I never did care for these stories about heaven and St. Peter and the pearly gates. I, I've always thought they were a little bit cheap and... Yet, once, I guess once in a while we, we tolerate one such as this one, the, the story of the man who went to heaven and was confronted by Peter who said to the man, In order to get into heaven you must have one thousand points. What have you done to earn your one thousand points? The man replied, I never heard that before, but I'm sure I've earned at least that many. I'm the father of three children. I've been a good father and husband. I've never cheated on my wife or mistreated my children. In fact, one of my boys is a pastor. Another is a missionary. And my daughter's a nurse working in the slums of our city. I'm a banker, and I give over 20% of my income to God's work. But I don't just give money. I put my life and my words where my money is, in my bank. I've worked to bring low-income housing to the poor in my city. I spent one night a week working in a clinic in the slums. I put a number of poor kids through college and I support a number of missionaries on the field. And every Christmas I go to the Salvation Army in our city to help them raise money. I always support my pastor and his work for the Lord, and I have been chosen as an elder in our church. Most of my good works and deeds are done in secret, though. I've built anonymously an educational wing in our church and a hospital in Haiti. So the man looked over to St. Peter and asked, How am I doing? Peter replied, well, that's the point. Have you ever done anything else? Good night, 
The man exclaimed, Lord, have mercy. Peter laughed and said, You've got it. That's a thousand points. Come on in. I don't know whether that's a cheap illustration or not. Again, I don't care for those kinds of funny stories. I think it's sort of demeaning to the scriptures and all, but the point is that the key word was mercy. We come unto God to receive mercy and grace to help in time of need. Sometimes it's good to deeply reflect on the grace of God because His grace is absolutely sufficient. He has done everything necessary to make us acceptable. So we are acceptable. We don't have to worry about it. Tonight's program, guilt-free. I think the personal aspect of the gospel is so encouraging. It's not just to a mass of people who have had a pretty good track record. It's for the worst of us, because we all are in the category of the worst. According to St. Paul, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if we break that down, we'll realize that it was for you personally that Jesus died. It was for you. And I'd like to play about it right now on the trombone. It was for you and me personally 
the Savior died. In case any of you have come by here in the last few moments, you're in tune with the program Night Sounds. We come on the air basically five nights a week on most of our radio stations. And any time I think about the local station to which you're listening right now, well, the word gratitude comes to me because if it were not for the kindness of these stations putting us on the air, we certainly couldn't meet like this. So I'm very grateful to the management, the staffs, those people who work the night shift who put night sounds on the air, and certainly to you for listening. You have listener power. Could be you didn't realize that. You're a very significant person, and I thank you for being there. Just a few minutes, we'll be going off the air. But it's gratifying to know that we'll hear from you. Our mailing address is Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois. That's capital W-H-E-A-T-O-N, Illinois, 60189. And our subject matter tonight, circling around the word guilt. And our title is Guilt Free. We've mentioned illegitimate guilt. John Wesley used to say, fake it till you make it. <laughs> Sounds a little crass, but... He was once in great difficulty because he didn't believe in the concept of faith. And he went to his spiritual advisor who said, Wesley, preach faith until you have faith, and then, because you have faith, you will preach faith. In other words, Wesley was asked to fake it until he made it. That sounds a little bit strange and off-center. And it's not hating hypocrisy, but... Obedience, if you were free from debilitating guilt and worthy of the blood of Christ because of his grace, what would you do? Do it, because if you are a Christian, you are in fact worthy and free from guilt. So conforming to a reality instead of a lie, you come to believe this. I couldn't come on the air tonight had I not this morning asked God to clear my soul, to confess every known sin to him, and to walk out that front door clean. I don't want to dig up the garbage from last week's pickup. That'll only bring us down to the gutter again. Let's believe that we are free and come to him as we are, nothing in our hands, but confessing him, saying, Lord, I need you. I'm guilty. I feel guilty. I don't want to be guilty. Take my guilt. Cleanse my heart. Help me to be like you. In other words, come just as you are.
confess your guilt and let it go. I love this story. There was a guy who owned a Rolls Royce. While traveling on vacation, there was a mechanical failure. So the man called the company from which he had bought this car, and they flew in a mechanic from England to repair it. After waiting a number of weeks for a bill for the repair job, the man wrote to the company in England and asked for a bill. He received instead a telex. It read, We have no record of a Rolls Royce with a mechanical failure. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for putting our sins and our guilt far behind your back and forgetting them. Thank you for that. And if there's anyone out there right now who feels the weight of his sin or her guilt or the track record's just too much to handle, would you touch them with your peace and your grace? Recover, rescue, renew them, Lord. Through the blood of Jesus Christ and by your power we pray. Amen. I'm very grateful to you for joining me tonight. You can go to sleep and out the door tomorrow guilt free. Confess it to Christ and blow it out the window. Our mailing address, Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. Thank you again. God bless you and lead you guilt free through tomorrow until we meet again. A peaceful good night to you.